What you see back there is a very small representation of what you can do to like a full acre of lawn for less than $10. I went off to my local Home Depot. I bought a few things. The total bill ended up being less than 10 bucks. And I was able to take that investment and throw it onto my mower, get the striping activity that you see back here. There's no special tools required, just a couple of tiny little things. If you don't know, stripes are really just the direction that the grass is laying. If you got some grass laying this way, some grass laying that way, then it's gonna put a pretty cool pattern into the lawn. By putting diagonals into that pattern, you can end up getting diamonds and a lot of other interesting kind of uh, visual representations of a manicured lawn space. They're gonna set your lawn apart from your neighbors and anyone else you've probably seen in your neighborhood. All right, now what I decided to do for this project was to literally just weight down the back safety flap on the back of any push mower. I've never owned a push mower that did not have a uh, safety flap on the rear. It basically drags across the ground and it's only a few ounces, but if we put some weight on it, it's actually going to push the grass down. To add that weight, I decided to use number four or half inch uh, diameter rebar. If anyone is ever going to try this or if I'm ever going to do this on any mower, I have to measure the back flap of my lawnmower so that I cut the rebar to size. Now, I personally decided to go buy a metal cutoff disc for my angle grinder. You don't have to do this. Most people have a hacksaw in their garage, I do, and I'm not that special, but I actually don't really want to go through the manual labor of cutting rebar with a hacksaw. So I spent an extra of 450 or so on a metal cutoff disc. The bar of rebar was a little under $5, and if you wanted to put extra weight on it, you could buy two bars and cut both of those to size. For my mower, I had a 18 inch back flap, so I bought a 36 inch piece of rebar and cut it in half. Using two pieces of rebar cut in half would double the weight and improve the, the quality of the stripes going down on the lawn. Now the rest of this is not rocket science. I literally just drilled holes in the flap and secured the rebar to my back flap, my back safety flap, with zip ties. Obviously, the more zip ties you use and the heavier duty or the heavier grade zip ties that you use, the more durable and safe this is. I wanna be clear, I'm not telling you to do this to, the, to your lawnmower. This is what I decided to do to my lawnmower for the fun of it and to see how good the stripes could be for the most minimal effort and financial expense possible. So as you can see, while I'm striping the lawn with the mower with these, uh, this rebar on the back, it's doing a pretty good job despite the fact that the rebar doesn't weigh all that much. Number four rebar weighs approximately two thirds of a pound per linear foot. So I used a uh, three foot bar that I cut in half, which means I'm using essentially two pounds of rebar to weigh down that back flap. So if you were to increase your costs and buy a second piece of rebar or a third piece of rebar, uh, in my instance, every 36 inch piece that I cut in half and I strap to the back of that flap adds two pounds of weight. If I were to do this for all of my lawnmowers, I would flip them all over and make sure that if I'm adding anything to that flap, uh, that the, the extra that the extra girth that I'm adding to it isn't going to be in danger of going under the mower and getting anywhere close to those blades. The last video I made on this channel has to do with striping your lawn without using the lawn mower at all. So if you don't want to modify your mower, make sure to watch this video up here. This uh, kind of shows you a little bit more about how lawn stripes happen and how you can get them into your lawn without a lawn striping kit or any sort of lawn mower modification.